Welcome to Electron Online. In order to graph polynomials of, I, of higher order, we need to understand some of the basic principles. So now let's go look at polynomials of third order. Typically, they will look something like this, or they will look something like that. Notice the general equation is y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And in the case where the coefficient in front of the first term, the x cubed term, is positive, you notice that it starts from the negative values for y, comes up here, reaches a what we call local maximum, comes down here or local minimum, and then it continues to increase forever in the positive y direction like that. Or in the case where the coefficient in front of the x cubed term is negative, less than zero, then it starts at the positive y direction or the positive y value over here, comes down, there's a local minimum, comes here, there's a local maximum, and then it goes on to a, a negative value that increases all the way down to negative infinity if you keep going. Now notice in each case, each of these has three roots. So a, a polynomial of third order can have as many as three roots. One, two, three. One, two, three. Or it can have less roots depending upon what the equation looks like. In the case where you have y equals x cubed with and it could be a constant times x cubed or just simply one times x, x cubed, you can see that the polynomial looks like this, and there's only one root right there where it crosses the origin. Or if it's y equals minus x cubed, you can see that again, there's only one root right here where it crosses the origin. Now there's other occasions where you can have a, a graph that looks like this, just kind of the same like that, but notice it only crosses the y-axis in one place, and therefore, there's only one single root. Here, you can see that it only crosses it in one place with one root, and there again, it only crosses in one place with one root. There's a possibility for a second root, only two roots, and let me show you what that might look like. So, for example, if you have a graph, if this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis, and it comes up like this, one root right there, it comes back down but just touches the line and then comes back up like this. Now you can see that in this case, the polynomial of third order has a root over here and has a root right there. So there's only two roots in that case. So the possibility is when you have a trinomial, a polynomial of third order, that you have three roots, one root, two roots. You can have a situation where there's zero roots. In this case, you can. Parabolas can have zero roots, but uh, third order polynomials have to have at least one root and you can see that there's no other possibility. Even if you just have this one term right here, you have at least one root. Now that you understand that, we can go to the specifics of how to graph polynomials of third order. But before we do that, let's take a look at polynomials of fourth order, fifth order, sixth order, and see the generalities of what we need to know and see the pattern. Because once we see that pattern, it makes it much easier to graph these particular polynomials. And that's how we do that.